Okay, so I just realized that I was not recording um, when I should have been, and I'm going to go through this again really, really fast. So let me get back to approximately the same state we were in before. Oh, now I'm recomputing. Oh, that's great. And this had 50. There we go. All right, so um, this is where we were at the start of this segment. So you guys can take this all as a recap. Sorry to do this to you again. Um, we are turning this off so that we can work on the subdivide surface behind it and change it so that we can get a reparametrized panel. So um, that means that we're going to reduce the size of the panel within its own boundaries. Um, so that looks kind of like this. Um, we're going to need to create a domain using construct domain squared, not divide domain squared. Now we're going to create a domain for each of our divided panels. So that um, is going to go up here. <clears throat> and uh, the other step is we're going to use isotrim again, except now we're isotrimming each individual panel to a new parameter or boundary of its own self. Uh, so we need to reparametrize uh, those panels to do that. And so if we go into surface and utility and isotrim, we're going to do this again, but we're going to do it using a creation of a domain rather than a division of a domain. And that's going to look a little something like this. We're going to plug in the surface to the surface input of subdivide surface. We're also going to plug in our um, create domain squared into the domain input, but we're going to bear in mind that it still gives us an error. And that's because we haven't reparametrized the surfaces that this is applying to, that it's going to create. So the, the minimum value is zero right now, and the maximum value is one. And that basically is determining how much of each of these panels that you gave me am I going to reparametrize this surface to be reduced to? I think that might even be a better way of saying it than I said to you guys before. So um, it's a percentage of the original surface. So in order to get it to actually apply to that surface, we need to reparametrize the surface input by right-clicking on it and going to reparametrize. You see the error goes away, but all of the panels here are um, green. Now I also want to increase the size of my panels so that the gap that it creates in between them is a little wider. So I'm going to reduce the U count to about half of that, say 25. And the last thing I need to do here in order to get it to start adjusting is um, to uh, create sliders for a percentage value from 0 to 1. So that means I'll create a slider from 0 to 0.55 to 1. And I'll plug those in. Um, let me just make four copies. I'll plug them into each respective input, and it will give you an error until you have separated the minimums and maximums from one another. So I'll take my minimums down, my maximums up, minimum down, maximum up. And if you'd allow me to turn off the uh, subdivide surface, you're going to see that now my panels are basically just a fraction of what the original panel was. So I can turn this back on, and now I'm expanding upon what I said before. I can turn this back on and do a couple of things. If my minimum is all the way at zero, basically my maximum is just going to grow from the uh, left side of the panel itself. So that's kind of a way of anchoring it. If I pull it, if I pull it off, then it's basically going to float somewhere sort of kind of in the middle of the panel, which is acceptable as well, but it's not exact. Um, if I want it to be exact, I need to basically type in the numerical value to be equally 
uh, subtractive of 0.5 and equally additive of 0.5 for my minimum and my maximum. And then I know it's going to be exactly in the middle. <clears throat> um, you could also do that by a mathematical operator too. You guys want to see that too? So it'll always be in the middle using mathematical operators? Okay, that's valuable. Um, so if you want it to always be in the middle, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, what you're going to do is set up a param for 0.5. And this is kind of just going to be your, your middleman. And essentially you're going to have a plus whatever slider and a minus whatever slider. Um, and they're going to plug into each of those. So uh, let me go to math and I'm going to drop in addition and um, subtraction. So 0.5 is going to plug into the A value of each. And I'm going to create a slider here. Well, let me just get rid of these. I'll create another slider that's going to say um, from 0 to 0.25 to 0.5. Copy that down for, actually, we only need one. Um, so then that becomes the B value of both. So now your A output, let's just make it 0.5 or 0.05 for simplicity. So now your A value is 0.55 and your, um, sorry, not your A value, your additive value and your subtractive value is now 0.45. So um, if I plug my uh, positive number into the uh, maximum and my negative number into the minimum, then I have my proper subdivision. Now I'm going to have to do a different one for the um, vertical because it's a totally different height differential. So with this one, I'm actually going to make the numerical value much larger. Almost, uh, it's almost going to add up to a full one. So I'll make it a 0.4. And so the, the 0.4 is going to plug into the maximum and the um, 0.1 is going to plug into the minimum. So that essentially created a mathematical operator where if you look at where the, the, the subdivision is in that panel, I know it's hard to see on the projector, but basically as I slide these things up and down, you'll see that now it's, whoops, sorry. Now it's moving in both directions at the same time. Does that make sense? Feel like that's valuable? I feel like it is. Let me select it so you can really see it. All right, there you go. Um, so you see how that's now moving in both directions? So I can make it very thin. I can make this very, very tall. Um, and what, you're, what you can rest assured of is that that panel is in exactly the center location of the original surface. Making sense? All right, so I know this video is running a little long, but I just want to show you how easy it is now to go back and modify the definition to replace the connections that you had before for your extrusion. Right, so all we have to do here is instead of extruding the reduction here, now all we do is um, extrude the subdivide surface. So let me plug that into extrude, turn extrude on, and turn all my other stuff off. And now you can see that your louvers are rather dense and they're all spaced out rather evenly, which looks more eloquent in my mind than what we had before. Do you agree? And then um, even simpler now, if I just pull my reduce factor out, I can plug the subdivision into the reduction and then the reduction into the extrusion. Uh, oh, I need to reduce it a lot. So there you go. So I can start reducing a few of these as well. Bump out my seed, make it a little more interesting. Something like that. Okay. Um, questions? All right. So I know you guys probably have a couple of things to catch up on here. I talked a lot. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll get you guys caught up before we move on to anything new.